Okay, moving along. We're fishing with Dr. Bill Engber out of Madison, Wisconsin. Doc's a really good friend of mine. He had an opportunity to go with me for the very first time I challenged the Winnipeg River west of the White Dog Dam. Our conditions on July 22, 1998, well, our winds were west at 10 mile per hour. Our air temps were 75 degrees, our water temps 69 and holding, and our skies were becoming cloudy. If we take a look at John Alden Knight's solar tables, we'll take a look at our time of catch, 5 o'clock p.m. Look at your p.m. periods. Your minor's at 4.50 and a major at 11.05. Therefore, folks, we were inside the influence on the minor. Our moon phase on July 23rd, a full moon. Again, dealing with that three-day factor of influence on either side of that full moon or new moon period. Sunset, 8.40, no big deal here. Our forage, walleye, perch, smallmouth, and sucker in this region. And while we learn a little bit about the muskie, let's also learn about a piece of technology that can actually enhance, especially your very first time of ever fishing a piece of structure. Folks, it's the pinpoint. I cannot emphasize enough how important this piece of equipment is. We'll talk color and Doc, presentation. we're starting to come up on top of this thing. Tell you what I'm going to do. We're in 9.3. I'm going to set the trolling motor up. It'll track this for us. How far are you going to keep it off the reef? I'm going to set it at nine feet. It sounds great. We've got a little ripple starting to come up on top. That's a good thing. It's crazy because we first shot the boat down. This thing was flat as a pancake in here. Just in a matter of what, 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, it's starting to the blow. The breeze has picked up. Yeah. Maybe it'll blow us a little more luck. At least one thing with its pinpoint, we can stay on this outside reef and never encroach upon those fish if they're on top of it. They could be behind us in this deep water, but I think our, our best bet is going to be up on top. You throwing that orange bandit pig? I am. In a sky like this, you know, people will have a tendency to throw dark lures. I have a tendency to choose bright colored lures, like the one you've got on. And why is that? Well, I think the, it's more visual to the fish. you got fluorescent colors. They're using the low light to its best potential. Uh huh. And I think it's best for the fish. Let's take a look at the structure that Doc and I actually chose to fish. The day prior to this, Doc and I were in there at bright and sunny conditions. I pulled up a very big fish on a JP6 crankbait, walleye pattern. This day, however, we had clouds. We got on top of the structure much closer. You'll note we have three different pieces of submerged structure, all about five feet deep. In the center of that is an absolutely beautiful food shelf. Folks, this is where the forage is going to come under these low light conditions. Now we have incredibly deep water on the current edge. These fish will inhabit that deep water and make their ascent up to this food shelf when all conditions are right. We had an oncoming front literally only moments before this we started to see the change in effect. We made a 15 mile run to this very spot. You know folks, I've been throwing the giant jackpot since the day I conceived this lure for everything from muskies to northern pike and even some saltwater fish. And I've had many people ask me over these years, do I ever break my rhythm or do I keep it totally consistent? Well, truth of the matter is, as I said in the beginning, fishing is nothing more than a moment in time that can never be duplicated. And this is one of those situations where I did just that. I broke the rhythm and I don't know if I can duplicate it. It's a good fish, big one. Gonna need a net, big guy, gonna need a net. Now remember, the day before, in bright sunny conditions, I had a fish up, a monster fish, on this very She's spot. Not very well at all. On a JP6 crankbait. Hang tight, hang tight, hang tight. Oh, holy smokes. We got her. That's the big one. We got her. 40 That's plus the pounds. One. That's the big we one. We got her. <laughs> <laughs> I think Doc got a bath out of the whole deal. That was the very first muskie I've ever caught on this system west of the White Dog Dam. Let's break this structure down one more time. You notice the hard boulder rock we have to the left of the boat in the graphic. To the right is that softer structure, four feet from the surface. The food shelf is the area where we have the walleye and the perch, which come up on top of these areas to campaign their forage as that diminishing light comes on. Now that predator, the muskie, is going to be the last one to show up. However, folks, 
Add oncoming clouds or low light situations and add the forage in place and that muskie can make that ascent very rapidly. And if you do it right, this is the magic that can be in your hands. You hold her higher. Oh, beautiful. Hurry up, hurry up. I'm pushing. Okay. Oh. That's the one we saw. Now keep in mind oh, that we boy, saw the fish the day before very, very in bright sunny nice. conditions on a crankbait, an Odyssey JP6, came back in the low light and took it on a jackpot.